Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum coming to you live from KSCO Radio. That was Blues Without Blame by Stevie Guitar Miller. And uh, what an amazing guy he was. I remember when I was 17 years old, I saw him, maybe even 16, saw him up playing on a little bar off of uh, University Avenue. My sister was a, a beer server there, and uh, he was playing. And um, she knew he was one of my favorite artists. So she got me and my friend Johnny McVeigh in the back door and, uh, you know, made sure that we had enough libations. And there was uh, a little stage about five feet deep and, uh, you know, 10 feet wide. And there was a just a rope separating us from Stevie Guitar Miller and the band. And so, of course, my friend Johnny McVeigh and I were right there, a foot away from Steve, Stevie Guitar Miller, right in the front. And um, he got done um, playing a song, turned his back on us. And I remember he had a leather coat on and I go, the gangster's back. And he goes, that's right. Turned around. Do, 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 The gangster's back. Anyway, it was pretty cool. Um, so I don't know why I decided to play Stevie Guitar Miller today, but, you know, um, I have a, some interesting stuff to talk about now. Um and maybe it has to do with blues without blame, because a lot of us have, a lot of the peoples of Earth have made some safe and uh, effective choices over the last few years. And um, we, I really wanted to talk about an interview that I saw with my group of, of Dr. Pompa patients, I mean, doctors uh, from around the globe, really. And um, as Dr., um, a scientist, a researcher named um, Spencer Feldman was on, and this guy, we've talked with him many times, brilliant, brilliant guy. And um, we were talking basically about what's been going on with, you know, the amount of infirmaries, the amount of increased cancers, the amount of heart attacks, even in teenagers or kids, um, the blood clots that we're seeing and all this kind of stuff. It seems absorbent compared to what it was five years ago. So uh, Spencer and my friend Ben Azadi, if you don't know Ben Azadi at the Keto Camp, you should follow him, he's amazing. Uh, they've done some interviews and we had him, um, doc, or Spencer with us several times. But anyway, I wanted to um, talk today about safe and effective choices and what those have done. And um, basically, I think you're going to find that it's pretty amazing. I'm going to pull up a slideshow for those of you that are going to watch this later. Um, so, you know, when you take a look at the safe and effective choices, I got to grab my notes. Hold on. Most of you know that, you know, for almost every show, I, I come in with a concept of what I want to talk about, and then I uh, just go for it. Today, I actually took notes, 17 pages of notes. I might get through a couple of them to kind of help me give you all an idea of what you can do, because I really kind of take a look at the last few years um, as the emperor's new clothes, you know, for the last three to four years, the emperor has been wearing nothing and nobody could say anything about it. You know, we all had to say how good he looked and all this kind of stuff, but nobody could make any comments or even let him know that he wasn't wearing any clothes. And it seems like that's kind of the way it's been um, for several years. But what's happening is we're seeing the population get less and less healthy. We're seeing amazing amount of problems in our society. So and health around the world. I'm gonna be talking in a little bit of rhythm, um, colloquial, well, I don't even know what to say, metaphors, because uh, Spencer and Ben were taken down for some of the things that they said. And I just wanna make sure that you all understand that when I say safe and effective choices, you understand what that might mean. As it turns out, 72%, according to an article in the New York Times, 72 people of the percent of the peoples of Earth uh, did participate in safe and effective choices at least once. That's 5.5 trillion people. Pretty crazy. 
And at um, any rate, what we are noticing now, we're seeing a huge increase in young people with heart attacks, other people with uh, cardiomegaly, um, issues like that, aggressive cancers coming on, chronic conditions of, in previously healthy people, uh, many people suffering from a chronic condition um, is getting worse. There are people that are telling me, patients tell me, I have colds that won't go away. As soon as they go away, they come back again. I'm tired. I just can't get enough rest. And then again, the increase in autoimmune disease and um, the advancement of chronic disease. So what is going on with this? And uh, Spencer had a lot of really good things to tell us. And so... Um, I'm going to um, just stop for a minute on this and go, you know, I'm, as most of you know, I am part of uh, Dr. Pompa's group, Health Centers of the Future, now Health Centers. Um, our, we are a dedicated, diverse group of healthcare professionals dedicated to enhancing our body's abilities to thrive in an ever-increasing toxic environment. So that's really what this is about. Um, Dr. Dan Pompa and I have known each other and been friends for about five or six years now, and uh, we speak in groups every um, week, and we oftentimes hang out together and with a bunch of the doctors uh, discussing what we can do to help people get healthier. Um, and, uh, you know, really, most of the people that really are trying to make a difference, it's called From Pain to Purpose. You know, we want to fix this. We realize that health is at a cellular level and that we need to fix a cell to get well. And, um, you know, there's 75 trillion cells in your body. Uh, some of the stuff I'll be talking about today, near the end, I'll be talking about what you can do about it. But you want to realize that you, there's steps that must be done to get your body able to even think about eliminating some of these things that occurred after people made these safe and effective choices in the past. Um, the toxic proteins that we've seen from those safe and effective choices are causing a lot of conditions that we'll talk about. Um, you're going to hear me talk about foreign genetic material. And that foreign genetic material that's found in those safe and effective choices are creating these toxic proteins in our body with consequences. So. Um, I did a talk at my uh, business group the other day on this subject. I sat in um, wonder for two to three days whether I should broach this subject, and I decided that I had to. It was my obligation to do it, and I was amazed at how many of the people came up to me or said aloud in the group, thank you so much for talking about this. My mother made some safe and effective choices, and she's not doing well. I wish that I had more information. I felt like I had to do it and on and on and on. So I decided, okay, I'm going to talk about it on my radio show here today. And um, Spencer Feldman, who a lot of this uh, information comes from as far as what to do about it. I spoke to him yesterday, uh, just getting some clarification. And he has agreed to come on the radio show with me in the next uh, couple weeks. So I will be bringing Spencer Feldman on as well. The guy's a pretty much of a one of those geeks that sits in front of his or stands in front of his computer all day doing researches, looking at all of the different studies and gleaning through to find out what, you know, what we can do. So for such a time as this, um, it's so important to understand how to get healthy. And Dr. Pompa really decided to create his newest Pompa program, which is a cellular detoxification program for such a time as this. And of course, uh, anybody who uh, knows that that's a biblical term. And, um, you know, right now the world really needs help. And for such a time as this, we have some answers for a lot of people. Some people, it's going to be too late. Other people, um, still have time and, you know, we're going to do whatever we can to help as many people as we can. So, um, I, uh, have, I, this is going to be available on, on, uh, my YouTube channel, Dr. Duncan McCollum, Dr. Duncan McCollum, um, and in a slideshow as well, if you want to show this to anybody or send it to anybody, as long as it isn't taken down, 
So I am going to use these colloquial terms to try to help us get through this event. And uh, so you'll see a picture of some of the group of Dr. Pompa doctors. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're working hard to bring you the, the functional ability to change your health and those of, around you. And uh, so my purpose personally is to unleash the body's own innate healing power so that you may pursue your dreams. And uh, so I am constantly studying and reading, um, you know, and tuning into people like Dr. Pompa and Dr. Feldman and Benazadi and Mindy Pels and all of these people that we work together. And so many of us try different things before we put it out in the public because we want to make sure it works. It's the, um, and then the Hippocratic Oath is, of course, first new, do no harm. So before any doctor gets his doctor in the healing arts field, he has to agree to what's called the Hippocratic Oath. And that's from Hippocrates. And that the oath says, first do no harm. So that's pretty amazing. I try to live by that as much as I can. So... Um, the emperor's new clothes. Now, something happened, an event happened a few years ago that actually um, ended up causing people to panic, maybe not think the, as clearly as they wanted to. Now, some of you are going to go, what the heck's he talking about? Everything was great. And that's fine. Perfectly understandable. Other people are going to go, you know, I did some of that and I kind of wish I didn't. Other people are going to go, I thought something was wrong. And other people are going to go, I told you so. So wherever you are on that spectrum, it doesn't even matter. Even if you um, did not um, partake in any safe and effective choices, this is very important for you to listen to as well, because you can um, just in proximity be exposed to some of these things. Um, as well as the fact that the particular um, thing I'm talking about was, was engineered in a lab anyway. So there are genetic um, modifications there. And I'm going to go into the genetic uh, modifications and specifically in here. So hang in. It's going to be a little bit um, hard to understand at one point, but I'll try to make it as easy as I can. Okay. So um, safe and effective choices, these things have produced toxic proteins, and um, these uh, toxic proteins are created from foreign genetic materials that we were exposed to by making safe and effective choices. Now, those proteins are staying in the body. What we found and what um, the scientists have found is that Typical RNA, when it's created in our body, lasts from two to 12 hours, and then it goes away. In other words, um, you know, for the, the body and its desire to survive, will create a message sent to the cells. This messenger RNA, um, ribonucleic acid, is created, and it will go to the DNA and give the DNA a message. And the message from that to that DNA it throws out some amino acids, which create whatever it is the RNA is saying. You know, it's like you go to the fast food joint and you go, I want a, a cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke. Well, that's going to be what you get. You go to a really nice restaurant and say, I want food with only olive oil, no um, bad oils, you know, all organic food and blah, blah, blah. Hopefully that's what you're going to get. It transcribes your order and sends it to the cook and the cook brings it up. So now what's happened with these um, toxic proteins that were put into our body, we found, or they've found that those last up to a month and rather than 12 um, hours, but they haven't even tested to see how much longer they do uh, stay in the body other than that. Now we know the body's supposed to break down these proteins. It's just supposed to do it. So what's the deal? There, I'm going to go into why these things are continuing to be produced in our body, uh, of what we can do about it, and uh, hopefully that will give you some hope and um, let you know that you can do something. So 13.5 billion um, times people went in and got a safe and effective, um, made a safe and effective choice, 5.5 billion people. 
and um, nearly 17 million uh, mortalities in uh, during that time for whatever reason. Okay, so the body has this ability to break down the protein. Now, the important thing to understand is, you know, everybody's talking about RNA, RNA, RNA. DNA, which is in our genes, it's it's like a library. You know, there's a lot of books on the library shelf, but it's not the librarian. DNA is the library, not the librarian. So if the librarian doesn't come and pull that book out and open it up to read it, it's going to lay dormant in there and, and nothing's going to happen. So you're, you're very welcome, Mike. Um, so the librarian comes and pulls out a book. When she or he opens it, he'll read that message in that book. And then the, that occurs, whatever it is that's supposed to happen, happen. Um, it doesn't do it on its own. This is why so many people, I mean, most all of us have um, all these genes that can cause all kinds of problems for us. You know, I mean, we have Alzheimer's genes, we have Lou Gehrig's genes, we have multiple sclerosis genes, we have um, muscular dystrophy genes. They're on the library. These books are on the shelf, but they're just not being um, opened or read. So this is the key is what can we, you know, and oftentimes if the librarian pulls out a book like a dictionary that she pulls out a lot and there's nothing bad in that dictionary, but the book next door gets jostled a little bit. Like when you pull a book out, sometimes the books on either side will get jostled. That can actually cause that, uh, the information in that particular DNA to be read. And then it will start to propagate. So I'll just keep track of my time here. So um, how do we deal with these things? Okay. Um, we need to be, or we need to be able to understand the mechanism um, because it is drastically affecting the people of earth. They're dealing with toxic proteins that are being created and we need to help people learn how to stop. Well, first of all, we have to handle the effects of that. So there's three things we're going to do. Number one, you got to fix the hole in the boat. So why are these proteins continuing to be formed? I'll explain that in a minute. And when these proteins are formed, now there are some people out there talking about ways to blow up the proteins and break them up. Um, this is like a Sherman tank. You blow up the tank, but there's these little guys in the tank called prions, P-R-I-O-N-S, and they would be like four soldiers coming out with machine guns. Now these prions are dangerous because they're going to go around in your body and create these proteins that inside the cell that are um, aberrated proteins. They're, they fold incorrectly. Now, it's like folding uh, a sheet on your bed, you know, a, a sheet with a pattern on it. Okay, let's say the pattern you want it to fold outside so you can see the pattern when you put the sheet away, right? Well, if you fold it the wrong way, you're not going to see the pattern. You're going to see the underside of the sheet. That's an incorrectly folded protein. Now, the problem with this in our body is the way these folding, these proteins are folded, they fold four times in the cell based on the RNA giving the, the DNA a message in this thing called a ribosome. Sorry about all these complicated terms. Let's put it this way. You have a messenger sending um, a message to the cook. The cook, which is the DNA, prepares the um the uh, meal, but he mixes up, puts in too much of this and not enough of that. And now he has a product that's in, that's not not health, healthy. You go to the to the uh, person at the table and you give it to them. They go, what the heck's this? And they want to send it back. So now we've got the RNA creating these poorly, uh, the, the RNA, and then these prions, which are the minions with machine guns, creating this incorrectly folded protein with the pattern on the inside and the um, bland sheet on the outside. Now, how that translates to what I'm talking about is these proteins that are folded in our cells millions and millions and millions of times in the 75 trillion cells in our body, a second probably, um, th when they're folded incorrectly, they have a fat, they're fat on the outside and water on the inside. Now, all of these proteins are supposed to be water on the outside and fat on the inside, but they've been manipulated via the um, safe and effective choice mechanism that their fat is on the outside and the water on, is on the inside. Now, what this means 
is as this protein is floating around in the body, rather than been excreting through your bloodstream and excreted out of the body through the kidneys, the oil outside makes it so the kidneys cannot excrete it. And it continues to float around in the bloodstream until it finds an oil or a fat to attach to. Oh, what's made of fat in our body? Well, our cell walls are made of 35 to 50% fat or oil. So, and our nervous system is 55% fat or oil. Our brain is 55% fat and our nerves are made of 55% fat. So now you have these incorrectly folded towels or sheets or proteins floating around, attaching to the fat part of our body rather than been excreting. And so the problem with that is that it is um, clogging up a lot of various things. It's like a, it becomes a Frankenstein um, RNA and they're a toxic protein. And these toxic proteins are neurotoxins. All right, so I'm going to um, talk to you about what they found, found in these. Um, I have to keep going back and remember safe and effective choices. They find, they have found, scientists found now that years have gone by, that there is 36, at least 36 sources of toxic amino acid sequences in there. And uh, there are 36, 20 of them are snake oil or snake venom sequences. Now, snake venom have um, phospho, uh, phospholipase in it that dissolves motor neurons and dissolves muscle membranes. So it will cause your body to start to break down. And it can affect peripheral neuropathy too, but much more in health. And they also, these snake venoms, the 20 snake venoms also have um, metalloproteinase in it, which is a, a one of the the most advanced hemorrhaginous substances known to Homo sapiens. So they create blood clots. These um, twenty snake venoms, and they also call cause necrosis in the body, and they also cause zinc deficiencies. So these zinc, how many people have lost their taste uh, sense of taste over the years? Now, the other one is there is 14, I think. Uh, yeah, 14, 15. 15 different snail venoms con called conotoxins. Now, these conotoxins cause damage to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which is in our brain. Acetylcholine helps our mental function to work. And uh, when you cause damage to the acetylcholine, then you end up with advancing degenerative conditions in the brain, like Alzheimer's and other things. There's also one starfish venom in there for some reason. Okay, so when you get these toxins in the brain, now, how do they get there? They now know that they go in through bone marrow and then they get into the, up through the meninges. The meninges are little vessels that go up through the um, covering of the nervous system inside your spinal canal and go up into the brain. And what do these things cause? They cause um, shrinkage of the brain. They open up the blood brain barrier. Now, most of us have our blood brain barrier opened anyway because of glyphosate, poor eating, too many drugs, terrible food, um, all those other things that are causing us to have these diseases already. But um, so this triggers when you get these um, nanotoxins in the brain, they, it's triggering things like Alzheimer's disease. But you know, what's one of the conditions of Alzheimer's disease? It's uh, aggression. A lot of times people with memory loss get aggressive. And um, But look at the aggression in the world today. I mean, it seems like there's wars everywhere, um, you know, unrest. We're fighting amongst ourselves, with our neighbors, with, you know, people of different everything. And you, you just got to wonder, does this have anything to do with these... Um, nanotoxins are these things, these neuro neurotransmitter blockers, the things that are wiping the acetylcholine out. I don't know, but you know, it's kind of an interesting thing to look at. So why are these um, toxic proteins um, so uh, damaging to us? Well, the, the normal proteins, again, they last for a couple hours, they're used, they're broken down into co their constituents and reused again. 
But these, um, these particular um, toxins, these toxic proteins have um, been, it's a, a foreign genetic material. It's been modified and it has four things that it does. It, it um, is much more stable than the typical protein. What that means is are the typical prions. So these are the prions that are inside the tank when you blow up the tank. So you got to get rid of the tank. And you also have to get rid of what's making the or per, continuing to spit those out. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, <clears throat> so these things called the prions, they're stable. So they don't go away within a two to 12 hours. They stick around for a long time. And um, they're also stealth. They've made them so that you can't see them. It's like when you put your cell phone in one of those um, lead cases, you can't, it, you're not, you can't see it anymore. They've also done something very, very curious and very maybe diabolical, if you will. And that's, there's something on the, in the sequence called a, uh, a stop codon. So anytime you say a sentence, you have the beginning, the middle, and an end, and then you have another sentence, beginning, middle, and end. Every time you end in the sequence of your, uh, these, the synthesis of these um, messages that are going out, it's supposed to stop. But these particular um, modified molecules, um, for some reason, they were able to, to take the stop codon out so or make it unseeable. So these proteins never stop. And then the other really crazy thing that they did is they, rather than being linear, like these are typically linear, um, they, they, um, they maybe go into a circle, but there's a there's an end, but a lot of them are linear. It's like walking, you know, on a pier. You come to the end of the pier, you keep walking, you fall off. Well, they've made these ringlets. So they just keep going around and around and around, and they're they're not ever stopping. And it's kind of like a, if you think about the old-fashioned printing press, as that wheel goes around and spits out the paper and it just goes and goes and goes keeps going out and it keeps spitting out these proteins faster than your body can break them down. Your body does have the ability to break them down, but just not as fast as they're getting made. So another um, version of this would be, um, for those of you old enough to remember Fantasia and the Sorcerer's Apprentice, when Mickey uh, went in and picked up the Sorcerer's magic wand and uh, tried to get the broom to do his uh, bidding, which was to mop the floor. Well, Pretty soon, the broom started going too fast, and uh, Mickey got an axe and started cutting it up. Well, what do you know? Pretty soon, there's um, more and more brooms carrying water, filling the whole place up, and flooding the whole place. So that's kind of the way these things are working, if you chose to get this uh, particular thing. Now, you can also, why, why are some people affected and some not? Uh, you can actually go... Um, and find your batch. You go, how how bad is my batch.com? You just Google that and it will take you to the CDC website and you can get your batch number um, if you did choose to get a um, safe and effective, if you did make a safe and effective choice and you can find out whether yours is one of those that's damaging or not. And um, I recommend you do. So again, these foreign genetic materials are the reason they stay so long, they're manipulated to be more stable, to be stealth, to stop these stop codons and become ringlets. Um, get along here. So, but, you know, again, the, uh, the problem with the um, librarian is do, you know, you may or may not, even if you did make a safe and effective choice, your book may not ever been pulled off the shelf. It may be some other things that occurred that caused that to happen. So you may or may not be exposed to it, but if you are, then you want to understand that there is some things that you can do about it. Another one of the things that you've probably heard in the news a lot was this thing sticking out, um, some kind of uh, sharp thing sticking out of these, um, these uh, little things floating around in your body. And they cause, they're fat soluble, so they stick to the inside of your blood vessels, they stick in your heart, in your brain, 
and attached to the cell walls blocking the receptors. But uh, these things are damaging. So what uh, Spencer has found is he's created uh, or discovered something called a cyclodextrin, which is a circular shaped sh simple sugar that isn't metabolized, but it's like playing toss the ring on the, you know, ring toss, whatever it is. And this is water soluble on the outside and oil soluble on the inside. So when it finds one of those bad, sharp things sticking up, which is fat soluble, causing it not to be uh, eliminated from the body, it covers it with this fat on fat, making this whole molecule now water soluble so it can be excreted out of the body, which is pretty amazing. So uh, we're still waiting for under to understand how to do this best. There is uh, a few things that need to happen before you even tackle this, which is you got to get your body relatively healthy and get your downstream pathways open, which is your liver, large intestine. And we all have some degree of leaky gut, um, bad microbiome or bad bugs in there. That's going to make this very difficult to do, but you can do it. It's just going to take time and understand that these things are staying in the body. And some people are gonna to have to kind of do this for a lifetime. You're just gonna to have to keep yourself clean. Clean. That's like people say, oh, I, I did a heavy metal detox uh, once. You're getting exposed to it every day. This is a lifestyle thing. If you wanna be and stay healthy, you're gonna to need to take care of your body by um, making sure that your downstream pathway is open. Find somebody, don't do this yourself, find somebody that can help you take a look at what your load is, what your toxic load is, and do it the right way. It's like pay, playing pick up sticks, but trying to pick up the stick on the bottom of the pile first. You disrupt everything else, and that you can get away with that and pick up sticks, but not in, when it comes to your health. This needs to be done correctly, and um, it's gonna be something that you need to learn how to do. You need somebody to teach you how to do it, so you can do it in the future, because th this is probably gonna be repeated um, other things are going to come along. The healthier you are right now, the healthier you're going to be able to sustain um, in the future and uh, avoid these other catastrophes that are coming our way. And all of the big names say it's coming. You know, it's a coming. Better watch out. The next one's here. It's a coming. But just know that now that we've had enough time to see that the emperor's um, wasn't wearing any clothes. And again, the name of this is the emperor's new clothes. Uh, nobody could say anything for years about the emperor not wearing any clothes. Nobody could say anything about these safe and effective choices people were uh, making um, one way or another. And nobody could say anything about these toxic proteins and what they were doing in the body. And, you know, probably even now we shouldn't be saying it. But you know what? I just decided I can't keep radio silence when I know that there's something that can be done about it. And um, so I'm speaking up. So uh, if I'm not around in a few days, you know why? I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so how do we deal with the foreign material? How do we deal with this? There's uh, different things that need to happen. We need to stop the, the toxic proteins from being formed in by that RNA telling the, um, ordering the cook to cook more bad um, meals. We've got to stop that. And that in itself is a, a, a hill to climb. Then we've got to take the ones that are already in our body and learn how to kill those. And that in itself is going to take some time and some understanding how to take, hey, Mike, how to take care of those um, bad fragments that are causing this, this malfunction of our body. And then we have to make sure that we are no longer being exposed to these foreign genetic materials that are altered and um, causing the problem in the first place. So um, the key terms are safe and effective choices, toxic proteins, and foreign genetic materials. So, you know, if you know anybody that did some of this and they're having trouble, give them, send them this, please. It's on. I don't know if it will be on Facebook long. Um, it will be on my um, YouTube channel, Dr. Duncan McCollum, for a while. <laughs> and then also uh, we may be able to send it to you. But 
I am going to have Spencer uh, Feldman on it within a few weeks, and we'll go over this again. I know it's a lot of material. Sorry about that. But, you know, I just, I've been studying this for quite a while. So Spencer says that, you know, how do we get rid of the foreign genetic materials? Um, it's made in a way um, that is getting into the DNA. It might even become part of the DNA, but as long as the librarian doesn't pull that book out, you're okay. So we wanna make sure that if that's the case, then we're gonna go about it differently than those of you that are being affected health-wise by it. And you know, there's a lot of things that are happening, not only you know, increase in heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, chronic infections, but also cancers. There's uh, cancers are coming back quicker and they're calling them turbo cancers. Um, so these are things that, you know, um, are potentially being propagated by these, um, the safe and effective choices that are getting these toxic proteins in there by these um, um, foreign, uh, foreign genetic um, molecules that we're getting in the body. So um, there's this thing, <laughs> there's so much going on here, you know, that it's just important to talk about, but I'm going to kind of go into some of the, the things that we can do. So the first thing we want to do is um, get rid of, make sure that we aren't exposing our body anymore if we can help it. And make sure, because, you know, and then we want to get our bodies as healthy as they can, because remember, we have the genes for so many different um, health issues. I wrote some of them down here somewhere, but, you know, it's like anywhere from cancers to Alzheimer's to Parkinson's disease to muscular dystrophy, all those, all those books are on the library. And it's just on the shelves, but it just depends on whether the librarian is going to pull one of those books out. And remember, these toxic proteins are neurotoxic, so they damage the nerves and the muscles. And they're also thrombocytic, which means they cause blood clots. And um, one of the things that we see is that inside the cell, now the DNA in our cells 12 feet long, or yeah, six feet long, the DNA strand in our cell, and we have 75 trillion cells, those DNA strands are seven, six feet long. So when the RNA goes in and rushes up against it, it's kind of like a, a screenshot. You know, when they do the silk screening, the, the, um, the paint goes over and picks up the image and then it goes and it prints it on another page. That's what RNA does. It goes and it picks up the image of the DNA specific amino acids that it wants based on its mes messaging. You might say there's magnets in there to pick up particular um, sequences of, of amino acids. Then it prints it on that next page. And um, then that will go out and create a protein, which goes and creates a function. So because of the, the shape of the, that they've made these, strands of um, ribosomes, they've made them circular or ringlets rather than linear, they don't stop making themselves. And they go around and around and around and around, they become bigger and bigger and bigger, eating up what's called the material inside the cell or the substrate until the cell either dies or explodes. And then we see all these problems with people with blood clots. Um, sometimes you see these um, autopsy people talking about, you know, blood clots a foot long or something like that. You know, um, again, this is the emperor's new clothes show. So all of this stuff needs to be talked about at some point. You know, it's like we've never had kids having heart attacks. And now they're trying to make that normal that kids are starting to have heart attacks. So we got to figure out what's going on. And um, so some of the solution, and this material is, again, coming from um, a lot of research done by the guys that are sitting there looking at stuff all the time. But uh, basically what we want to do is take a look at the three things that we need to do to solve this problem. The first one is we got to break down the toxic proteins. Now, um, that 
is from the, those come into our body from the um, safe and effective choices. And uh, there are proteins, there's enzymes that break these down. Now there's one particular enzyme called a um, nanokinase, and that comes from a Chinese or Japanese dish. It's called a nano. And that is a, anything that has an ACE on the end is an enzyme. So the nanokinase is known to break down these tank walls or the, um, uh, the, the bad proteins, these toxic proteins. And there's also something called serapeptase. Serapeptase is what butterflies use to eat their way out of their chrysalis. It's an enzyme that breaks down the chrysalis so that they can come out. There's also something called lumbrokinase, which are, comes from earthworms. And then our own body makes a pancreatin, which can also break down these proteins. So it's all great that our body can break these down and it would all be well and fine if they weren't being made faster than our body could break them down. So we want to break down these toxic proteins. And the reason that we want to take all four of them is we want to break them down as to small as possible pieces as possible. And that's when they become what's called prions. And then these prions are, are bad amino acids incorrectly sequenced, and they cause a lot of problems. So um, we need to handle the prions. And that's the thing that's floating around with those fat soluble spikes on it. And um, we know that cyclodextrins are sugar rings that are uh, water soluble on the outside, fat soluble on the inside. And we know that the problem with these unhealthy prions is that they're fat soluble on the outside and not, and water soluble on the inside. So there's all of these sequenced folded proteins made in our cells, all 75 trillion of them, are supposed to be water soluble. So that they float around in our body, they send their message to the different organ cells and all that stuff, whatever they do, and then they are, they are eliminated. Um, and they're water soluble, so they can be digested by the body, broken down into their what's called substrates, so they can be reused. It's a recycling center. And uh, But because these things, these bad ones are being made with the oil solubly on the outside, again, they're sticking to our cell walls. They're sticking to, because they're 50% fat, they're sticking to our nerves. All our nerves in the body are 50% fat. And then stick into the brain, which is 50% fat. And they're getting into our brain through a, a damaged blood-brain barrier that we've talked about on many other shows because of things like glyphosate, but not just glyphosate, other kinds of pesticides, herbicides, drugs, chemicals in, under your sink. Um, now we have the forever chemicals that are damaging our body, um, too many drugs that we've taken, uh, pharmaceutical or other um, bad infections that we've had, bad food that we're eating, all this stuff. So you can see that if you want to be and stay healthy, you've got to not just worry about this stuff, but create health by fixing what you got. And that's going to take a lifetime. It's years, not months. Some people go, I took an 11-day detox. Great. That might have got rid of one day of detox, right? You got to just realize that it's time to make a change. You got to start to take your health back. And uh, it's going to be up to you. Um, anyway, so these cyclodectrons are the thing that get on the sugar ring and allow you to eliminate it. And now we have the foreign genetic material. And there's four things wrong with them. They're stable rather than going away within two to four hours, two to 12 hours. Um, they stay around maybe indefinitely, but they keep pushing out new ones like that silk screen machine that's gone crazy or like um, Fantasia and Mickey Mouse keeps breaking those brooms up and they keep filling the, the house with water because he took the magic wand. Well, this was not a very good magic wand, whoever created all this stuff. They're stealth, so you can't, the body can't recognize them. How are you going to break down something you can't see? And then they uh, re, they disabled the stop codon, so there's no more stop signs in these things being made. And they go around and around and around until they fill up our cells with these uh, strands, and then they burst the cell or the cell dies. And uh, they've also put them into ringlets. So those are what we're up against. Now, somebody might ask, well, what if I decided not to take a safe and effective choice? Am I okay? 
meaning that you didn't take a safe and effective choice. Um, yes and no. So uh, perhaps you are, however, they uh, looks like um, exposure via bodily fluids with somebody who has could potentially um, transmit these things to you. And then they go into this tumbling act of continuing to propagate themselves. And just take a look of if you were, did have, um, if you did come down with whatever you want to call it, then um, that was all signs point to, and you, you must realize this was created, um, not, it didn't evolve by itself. It was created. And all these things put in there um, can cause other problems and some of these as well. So nobody gets out of the off this planet alive. And, um, but, you know, healthy and happy would be nice. So I really appreciate you listening today. I, you know, got to tell you, it's a lot of information. I understand that. Um, but basically, you have three things going wrong. You have the, well, from the safe and effective choice. You're not alone. 5.5 billion people on the planet decided to do that at least once. And 72% um, of the people on the planet chose to do that. So you're not alone. Um, different batches for different folks. You can always find your batch number by going mybatch.com or uh, how, how bad is my batch or something. You search it, you'll find it. It has the CDC uh, reference on it. It's from VAERS, V-A-E-R-S. That, of um, anyhow, VAERS. So we have these um, foreign bodies in our body, the four genetic material. We break them down with the four enzymes. We want to get their the tanks, little minions handled with the um, with the sugar circles called um, cyclodextrins, and then we want to make sure that we're not exposed to this stuff anymore. We want to clean it up. Fasting is really good for helping this because what happens is inside the cell there's this um, there's this great thing called a lysosome and it it breaks, basically breaks down these proteins once they're no longer usable and it either recycles them or hides them away in landfills. So eventually that landfill gets filled up and the lysosome can no longer protect you. So fasting autophagy, which we've talked about many, many times, can help reduce this, the um, landfill so your lysosomes can work better. It's like your garbage can in your house. you got to empty it every once in a while. And then also the cyclodextrin does help in cleaning out the lysosomes as well. So next week, I'll be talking about this a little more. By the way, on Monday, I failed to explain this. We are doing a peripheral neuropathy workshop, 1215 at my office. We still got some seats left, 831-459-9990. Remember, all disease lives, le leads to peripheral neuropathy. If you are suffering from anything that's affecting your ability to um, ambulate correctly, um, then um, numbness, tingling, hot, cold, all these things making you not be able to drive because you're afraid you can't feel your toes, then you should come to the workshop, 831-459-9990. Um, I am going to be, as this rolls out, we're still formulating exactly how to do it with the Pompa Group and Spencer Feldman and some of the other people. You don't want to just break down the foreign genetic material without being able to go after the minions the prions, and that's what some of these uh, techniques out there are doing. They're helping break down the, the foreign genetic material into its substrates, but it's not helping get those things water soluble so we can get them out of the body. So hang tight. Um, if you're interested in this, email Mariah, M-A-R-I-A-H at McCollumWellness.com. I'll be doing some workshops on this at my office, say interested in finding out about the um, safe and effective choices, safe and effective choices or just something. This radio show talking about how to get my body healthy. Um, anyway, I uh, hope this was at least somewhat organized for you. Uh, it's material that I've been waking up, burning the midnight oil, 
um, waking up early and burning the midnight oil so I can bring it to you. Um, I will organize it more so that I can actually be a little bit more um, concise with it. But also once we are able to help you uh, eliminate this stuff, then um, that's where the rubber is going to meet the road. I really hope that um, this has been helpful. Remember, never regret your yesterdays. Life is in you today. Live for today and create your tomorrows, okay? Vitamin G, one of the greatest things that you can consume. Splurge on it. 100% um, gratitude is where you need to be. And um, if I recommend, if you haven't got a bottle of gratitude, come by my office and ask for one. I've got a few left, and then I'm going to have to um, go harvest some more gratitude wherever I might find it on the planet. Sometimes it's difficult, but once I find it, I go to work and I bottle it as fast as I can, and I uh, love to give it out. So Dr. Duncan McCollum, call for the Peripheral Neuropathy Workshop this um, Monday, uh, the 15th, 831-459-9990, or email Mariah, M-A-R-I-A-H, at McCollumWellness.com. Let her know you're interested in uh, coming to the workshop or interested in more material about this today's radio show. I'm going to go back and uh, continue to study this stuff. We know what's going on. We know what the problems are. We're just making sure that we have the fastest, safest ways of pulling it out of the body. But before we even can do that, you've got to get your body's detox pathways open first. So that you can start today. You can call the office 831-459-9990 or info at McCollum, or no, uh, Mariah at McCollum Wellness. And we'll get you lined up so you can start detoxifying your body and get ready to do this. You can't do it um, until your body's ready to handle it. It will cause more harm than good. Remember the Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. So all doctors ab ab abide by that. First do no harm, I'm sure. So in all of the people in the healthcare field up to the top um, organizations on the planet, I'm sure they abide by the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. So I appreciate y'all being here. Um, we're going to go out with Stevie Guitar Miller and his song, Blues Without Blame, that I believe he got from B.B. King. And who knows where B.B. King got it. But uh, you know what? We're here to help you. Guys, have a great day. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.